Uh, good morning, St. John's. What a beautiful and gorgeous Sunday today, right? Yeah. Uh, welcome to St. John's uh, in-person service. And also do welcome all uh, to watching the online service uh, church Facebook. Uh, we are so blessed to get connected to one another uh, through this uh, worship the service. Uh, please open your bulletin if you are available. Uh, let me tell you about uh, the flowers on the altar. Uh, they are the given with love for the baptism of Talia Noel Anderson uh, from parents Brian and Katia and her brother the Brock. Um, and in sympathy, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier a week ago, we express our Christian sympathy uh, to the family of Anne Langley, who uh, was called to glory on April 6. Uh, after service, you all are invited to join the fellowship in Dallas Hall uh, to celebrate uh, the baptism of Talia Anderson. At uh, Eunice Park's Harper Recital on April 28 at 4 p.m., and the reception will be followed after uh, the concert. And uh, make your calendar, uh, St. John's Summer Music Camp, uh, June uh, 17th to 21st. And now the camp registration form is available in Nordex area. And Church Vivius, uh, August uh, 12 through 16. Yeah. Uh, did I miss something important for the announcement? If not, let us to begin our worship service.
join me for the call to worship the print in the bulletin. Peace be with you. The come and see the love God has given to us. The come with this hope that Christ, the presence, is real. Will you join me for the affirmation phrase, the hymn book page 881 at the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. All right, Wesley and Brock, right? It's uh, two boys. How are you today? Good. All right. Okay. Um, please look at this. What is it? Name tag, right? Yeah. And this is my ID by showing who I am. Then whenever I join a district at the pastors at the meeting. So this coming Wednesday also, I need to use this one the as I have a big the college meeting. So this name tag or maybe a driver's license, a photo ID, all they are used uh, to show the who you are, right? Yeah. So without it, uh, nobody knows the who I am. So today the Bible scripture reading and Jesus Christ after his resurrection, the when he tried to show himself uh, in public and in front of many, many people, that Jesus needed uh, his ID uh, to show who he was. Because uh, people were uh, terrified and doubting uh, whether this man, even though they look like uh, Jesus, don't know. So do you know the what ID that the region Christ used at the time? Today the Bible is reading very interesting the verse. Uh, the Jesus said, look at my hands and the feet. Again, look at my hands and the feet. So this was uh, the region Christ his wonderful ID uh, to show that he is uh, the risen Christ. Because uh, Jesus was like uh, the human hands and feet, right? Even he ate uh, the food. So I think uh, this, is, uh, this gives a really uh, a meaningful lesson. We Christians, and how can we show ourselves as disciples of Christ or children of God. I believe we also need to show 
our hands and feet, right? Hands to serve. And the feet uh, to visit and check in and support and do mission and ministry. So we also need the hands and feet, just like the risen Christ needed his hands and feet. So please, after today, that when you go back to your school, please think about it with your hands and feet. And how can you uh, use your hands and feet uh, to show uh, you are Christians, you are people of God, you are disciples of Christ? That is the big question. Okay? All right. Let's pray together. A loving Christ, I know that, we know that, uh, you after the resurrection, you showed, you needed uh, your ID uh, to present yourself. And just like you, uh, we want to use our hands and feet uh, to serve you, Lord, and serve, serve our neighbors and serve our church. And to Christ we pray. Amen. And today, the, we, on behalf of our own church, uh, we are so excited uh, to this very meaningful uh, infant baptism, uh, Talia Noah Anderson. So I would like to invite all the family to come forward and the parents. The congregation, please open your hymn book, page uh, number 39. The brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, through the sacrament of baptism, that we are initiated into Christ's holy church. And we are incorporated into God's the mighty act of salvation and given new birth uh, through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I have a question to the family. To who who will be the presenting the name of a candidate for this baptism today? The family of Talia Noel Anderson presents Talia Noel for her baptism today. Thank you. I have a question, the number 40 page. At the renunciation of a sin and profession of faith, these questions are to the parents only, the Katia and Brian. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, uh, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, uh, reject uh, the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Say, we do. We do. Uh, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you uh, to resist the evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Say, we do. Uh, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve uh, him as your Lord in union with the church uh, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races, saying, we do. We do. Uh, will you nurture Talia Noel Anderson in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves and to profess their faith openly and to lead the Christian life, saying, we will. We will. Thank you. And now the question, the next uh, for the congregation, please open your hymn book, page number 40, uh, section number eight. Uh, do you add Christ's body at the church, uh, reaffirm the both your rejection of a sin and your commitment to Christ. Yes. So will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include uh, the Talia and now the before you in your care? God's help. And live according to the example of Christ. 
and I, with the community of love and forgiveness, and she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her, and she may be a true disciple who walk in the way that leads to life. Thank you. And let us pray together. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt. You led them to freedom through the sea, and your children you brought through the Jordan and to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, and nurtured in the water of womb, he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called the disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, and to make disciples of all nations, to pray your Holy Spirit, to bless this gift of water, and those who receive it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her lives, that dying and being the raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. Amen. Amen. Talia Noel Anderson. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The page open your hymn book, page 43, at the first paragraph. Now, it is our joy uh, to welcome Talia Noel Anderson in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit in God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Amen. Please open your hymn book, page 191. The saying that Jesus loves me at two times and marching time to follow me. Page, page uh, the, open your hymn book to page 43, the commendation and welcome. And the members of the household of God, I commend Talia Noel Anderson to your love and care, to all in your power, uh, to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. 
We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministry of the Church and by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Let's have give a big hand to welcome the family. Wow. Wonderful job. <laughs> okay. Could you go back your feet?
Forgiving Father, we faithfully give witness to your works in this world by sharing these gifts and offerings. You share your son, Jesus, so that we may repent of our sins and be saved. Thank you for providing us with the example of how to place courageously your call of dis discipleship into action. We pray that we may live each day according to his holy ways. In the name of the great teacher, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. I pray to be seated. I pray join me for the hymn of illumination, the hymn of page 367, He Touched Me. Let us pray together. O Lord of dawn and darkness, how grateful we are for your loving mercies. You saw our fear and doubt, our suspicion, our mistrust, and you banished them from our lives, replacing them with your hope, peace, love, and joy. You called us to be your witnesses to all the world unafraid of what others might think or say about us. We have been invited out of our darkened hideaways in the light of your world as emissaries of hope and justice, peace and compassion. Be with us this moment as we participate in ministries of healing and hope through St. John's in our community, region, denomination, nation, and world to give us courage and strength to be your disciples in all the circumstances of our lives. In this moment, we ask for your peace, for your children in this world. And to Christ we pray, amen. At the scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses from 36 through 48, the print in the bulletin. While they were talking about this, the Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, The peace be with you. 
And they were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, "The why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands, and my feet. See that it is I myself. And touch me and see, for the ghost does not have a flesh and bones, as you see that I have." And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, "Have you anything here to eat?" And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, "These are my words that I spoke to you." While I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their mind to understand the, the scriptures, and he said to them, "Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed." In his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. A couple of weeks ago, I preached with、uh, the First Corinthians chapter fifteen, from verse one to eleven, on Easter Sunday. Anybody who remember that? That is why I can do ministry, right? Yeah, <laughs> the God is fair. I mentioned that the First Corinthians chapter fifteen deals with、uh, Apostle Paul's dilemma in his days. As you recall, in Paul's days, many people, especially from Hebraic and Greco-Roman cultures,、uh, didn't believe in Jesus' resurrection. There are no more steps after. Human death, period. So Paul had to persuade the people、uh, to believe in the risen Lord. But in the story today, we learn that Apostle Paul was not the only one who faced、uh, this challenge. The Luke was also wrestling with、uh, the issue of Jesus' resurrection seriously. It was not. Negating the Jesus resurrection,、uh, but misunderstanding Jesus resurrection as ghost face or hallucination, that when people saw the risen Lord. So、uh, Luke chapter twenty-four,、uh, verse thirty-seven. I think、uh, this is a key verse、uh, to read the story today. It reflects、uh, what people simply understood. And what Luke worried about clearly, the verse thirty-seven says, "They were startled, and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost." The with this issue,、uh, we see a ton of blaming people、uh, for their disbelief in Luke、uh, more often than in other gospels. Likewise. Uh, chapter twenty-four, verse five. In their fright,、uh, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground.、Uh, but the man said to them, "Why do you look for the living among the dead?" At the verse twenty-five,、uh, the chapter twenty-four, he said to them, "How foolish you are, and how slow、uh, to." To believe all that the prophets have spoken. The knowing that the Luke's the mission, the focused on the Gentiles in his days,、uh, with his、uh, knowledge in、uh, the medical area,、uh, we see how hard、uh, Luke tried to convince the people、uh, to believe in Jesus' resurrection. A couple of things require our attention first. In the street today,、uh, we see this 
a wonderful expression, my hands and my feet. The Luke chapter 24, verse 39, saying, Look at my hands and my feet. See, that is I myself. And touch me and see, for the ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. Look at my hands and my feet. Luke wanted to know, a show of the people that Jesus' hands and the feet literally and physically. It's hard to say that, that Jesus meant his stigmata. They're a totally different area. Or rather, uh, the risen Lord hoped the people to understand that he had a real body, uh, which was like uh, presenting the physical evidence. The second, uh, to undergird uh, his resurrection with a real body, the story today that shows a scene of Jesus eating a piece of a broiled fish in front of people. The Luke chapter 24, the verses 42 and 43 says, saying, they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Do you know this? Uh, these verses in, only in Luke present the Jesus eating food after his resurrection. Uh, these two verses are only ones showing the Jesus physical eating food. Matthew and Mark have no mention of eating food uh, by the region Christ at all. In John chapter 21st, still a uh, little bit controversial because uh, as we know, uh, John chapter 21 is uh, a kind of additional chapter. And actually, the John ends with uh, chapter 20. So anyhow, in John uh, 21, uh, there is a story of uh, fixing the breakfast uh, by the risen Christ in the Sea of Tiberias uh, for his disciples. But it's hard to see that uh, the risen Lord was eating breakfast with them. So the John chapter 21, uh, verse 12 and 13 saying, that Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. And now the, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? And because they knew it was the Lord, that Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. It is hard to see actually that Jesus was eating the food with them. If so, it is no exaggeration to say that Luke only presents at the risen Lord eating food physically in the story today. It means that uh, the risen Lord had his body and ate the food like us. And this was the Luke's the message in the story today. The here is a question for you. The what are the signs of Jesus' resurrection? I believe uh, these three keywords are good enough to show it in churches today. Hands, feet, and food. Hands, feet, and food. The what makes, what makes churches be the God's churches? Uh, by hand to serve, uh, feet to visit, and food to share. And this is what we are doing now. So ultimately, it was what the risen Lord uh, did after his resurrection. In Luke chapter 24, uh, where the story today is, there is one, the beautiful story to know how hands, feet, and food worked amazingly uh, to recognize the risen Lord. It is the story of two disciples uh, to Emmaus. So let me read Luke chapter 24, uh, verse from 28 through 30. As they came near the village uh, to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, uh, because it is almost evening, and the day is now uh, nearly over. 
So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. So the when people to disciples were discouraged, and Jesus walked with them friendly, fit to walk with the discouraged people. When Jesus was at the table and blessed the bread and food by his hands, they could recognize the risen Lord. So hands, feet, and food, I believe these three keywords are still working among us here and now. Like the risen Christ, that we are asked to show our hands and feet today. That what people expect from churches is not argument, debate, or discussion. Rather, they want to see the love of Christ from our hands and feet. That when Christians show their hands and feet, the world will begin to recognize who they are. As Jesus served the food for his disciples, although Jesus was disappointed by their denial, betrayal, and desertion, that we are encouraged to serve food for the world today, spiritually and physically. In this way, the churches become a community of resurrection. The looking back at this year's Lenten season and Easter, you never know how I am so thankful to God day by day. All hands, all the hands decorating the sanctuary for the tithe service. The tithe service was the perfect one, the collaborating, the music, decoration, and spirituality. And serving face painting for children in the recent Easter egg hunt. All fit and checking in homebound families and moving to find eggs here and there. All the food to serve a fellowship after services. In St. John's, it was full of hands, feet, and food. It is what we need to keep forever. And today I'm so happy, I'm so honored because I baptized the one little one with my hand. It's our great honor. Look at all the beautiful feet of children uh, to come to uh, their home church to baptize their kid. This is what should we see, right? All the feet uh, to come and visit again to buy our children. What about food? I look forward to enjoying the food after this service, right? Yeah. So hands and the feet and the food. This is another big, wonderful collaboration uh, to make this service so wonderful. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now I'd like to invite you to joy, uh, join the Joys and Concerns. Uh, anybody who'd like uh, to show your Joys and Concerns? Debbie. Um, as many of you may have known, there was a tragic house fire in Clifton on Wednesday, and I'd like you to keep the Bryce family in your prayers as their two sons, William and Zachariah, are in Children's Hospital in very grave condition, and they expect some more testing today, but also keep the first responders in your um, thoughts and prayers from the dispatchers who took the call from one of the sons to the firefighters who heroically tried to rescue the children and revived them to the workers in the hospital who are caring for them. Oh. Yeah, definitely our, our prayers go for all the family. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. And who else would like to uh, share? Rick? My mother, who is resident at Asbury and Solomon's in the assisted living facility, turns 100 wow. on the 18th this week. Oh, wonderful, yeah. 
100. Thank you. Wow, exciting. Yeah. And who else would? Yeah, Anne? Thank you, Anne. Yeah, right. And also, the Anne Langley just served the, the blood donation, the drive, right? Yeah. So, yeah, there and we. And also served in Vietnam, too, as a nurse. Right. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah. And who else would like to your uh, sharing your joys and concern? Well, by the way, we need to pray for the peace in the world, right? Yeah. The very serious. Uh, the, the happening in uh, Israel and Iran, so, yeah. Anybody who would like to uh, share your joys and concerns? If not, let's bow down our head and take a moment to, to pray in silence. Let's pray in silence. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray at the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I would you put your stand up if you are able. Please join me for the closing hymn, number 308, Thine Be the Glory.
I go now as God's church witnesses to testify that Christ has been raised, and that we are raised with him. Do not look for him among the dead, but be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And may God raise you from all the wood into you. May Christ Jesus call you by name and go ahead of you. And may the Holy Spirit empower you for all that is good, to go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be serious. Thank you. 